proper use of the Mettler Toledo balance. To begin using this balance, you have to first make sure that the scale is properly level. And the way you do that is you look at this bubble right in the bottom of the pan and you make sure that the bubble is centered. If it's not centered, then there are a couple of uh, legs here to adjust in the back. You turn these um, counterclockwise will raise the legs, clockwise will lower the legs. You adjust that until the bubble is directly centered. Otherwise, the balance will not properly record the mass. Once that's set, to properly turn on the balance, you, turn, you depress the on-off switch. And when you do that, the balance will warm up. Generally, you want to turn on the balance about 30 minutes prior to using the balance. That way, the electronics have sufficient time to warm up. Um, here, I'll show you some illustration as far as the scale is concerned. It tells you that the balance is on. Your, this is a programmable balance, and so you're home right now. It's uh, the starting point in which nothing is in the, in the scale. This is the date. It's shown. And then right now, because there's nothing in here and it's been properly calibrated, it's got 0, 0.000 grams. This measures to the tenth of a milligram or to the tenth of thousandth of a gram. Now, this dial right here tells you how much of the capacity of the scale you've used. And right now, since we have nothing, there's nothing to be displayed here. And this uh, scale down here tells you the resolution. If I press that, you can see that the resolution now is to the milligram or to the thousandths of a gram. But we want the highest precision possible. So I'm going to press that right there and get back to the tenth of a milligram. Now to open the, the, the display, you just brush your fingers through here and the balance will open. Okay, brush it again and it will close. Now, in this particular experiment, we're just going to weigh a, an aluminum slug. So the way I will do that is I will open up the chamber, place a weighing paper on the scale. I want to make sure that the weighing paper is not touching the sides or the bottom of the pan. Okay, so I'm just doing that. I'm going to close it. I'm going to tear the scale. And the tear is just to reset it down to zero, meaning that the scale, the, the, um, that will be the zero starting point. Let's begin the first part of the experiment. In this, uh, in this procedure, we are going to take five pennies and weigh them whole and then start removing the mass and remove the pennies as we re and weigh the pennies as we remove the pennies. Uh, again, we want to turn off, we want to make sure that it's level. Turn on the scale. Wait for the display to show. At this point, the scale should already be on uh, because the scale needs to be warmed up for at least 30 minutes. Once it's stabilized, then we go ahead and open the scale. We're going to add a weighing boat on here. Close the chamber. Tear wait for it to zero to stabilize and here then we're going to take five pennies and place it on the wing boat and close the chamber Wait for the scale to stabilize. 
as indicated here. You can see right away that this has a partial sh uh, sh shadow to it. It tells you the capacity, how much of the balance capa capacity we've used up. It's a very small fraction. It's stable. I would record this on my data sheet. I would open it up next, remove one of the pennies. What we are doing is weighing these pennies by difference. Close. I would record I would record this mass after it's stabilized and the difference between the initial mass and this final mass would be the weight of this particular penny. Next, I would open it up. I'd remove the second penny. Close it. And again, wait for it to stabilize. The difference between that second mass and this third mass is the mass of the second penny. I would record this data in my data sheet. Remove the third penny. Wait for the scale to stabilize. The difference would be the mass of the third penny. I would record this in my data sheet. I would remove the second penny. The difference would be the mass of the second penny. And finally, I would remove the last penny. And, well, can't um, go over that sensor because it'll, uh, it'll mistakenly close. After removing the mass of the fifth penny, mass should be back to zero if you do this properly. Once you are done with that, then you can go ahead and open the chamber, remove the wing bolt, close it up. And you should be ready. We tear it. Then I want to take an aluminum slug here. And the aluminum slug I want to handle with a tweezer or forcep. Okay? Uh, you can see right away that the mass starts to fluctuate because there are wind drift. Wind drift can easily fluctuate the, the, the scale because it's very sensitive. So I'm just going to take the slug right here and I'm going to let me just tear that again just to get back to zero and so you can see it's zero. Open it up. I'm going to put the aluminum slug right there. Oops. I'm going to wait for the thing to die. You see this? a uh, circle right here. When you see that circle, it means that the balance is unstable. You have to wait until that circle is gone in order to record your reading because that circle indicates that the balance is unstable. It's still trying to um, send the current so that it's properly correct. Now I can read the mass of this particular slug as 0.5823 grams. Okay. When I am done, I will open it up again. I will remove the aluminum slug, put it back in its chamber, and close it up. You have to make sure that you do not touch the item that you are weighing with your fingers because if you touch it with your fingers, the oil in your fingers will add to the mass. The scale is that sensitive. Close it up again, and um, we are done with this portion.